When you think of metal festivals, do you think of headbanging in a hot tub on the roof of a floating city in the middle of the Caribbean Ocean? Do you think of feasting in a fancy dining hall complete with Vikings shooting bottle caps at the chandelier? Do you think of watching a folk metal band while you look out the window and see dolphins? Well, that's kind of weird. But it's also exactly what you can expect on 70,000 Tons of Metal, a heavy metal cruise ship that spends four days traveling through the Caribbean and featuring 60 metal bands and a whole lot of alcohol. I made a video a while ago about 70,000 Tons where I pointed out some of the big issues they've been having, and in it I mentioned that despite these issues, the cruise itself is an amazingly fun time. Well, I'm happy to say that at least so far for the upcoming cruise in 2024, They've actually made some pretty big improvements, it seems. Mostly the already pretty sweet lineup. And I've been wanting to make a video highlighting the awesome parts of the cruise to show how much of a blast it really is. And with it only a couple months away, what better time than now? So headbang the like button, stage dive onto the subscribe button, and windmill the video to your friends. And if you're a fan of this channel, consider becoming a member. Membership start at just 99 cents a month. And each one really helps me towards starting the first metal festival on the moon. 70,000 tons of metal takes place every January and greets its past passengers at the cruise port of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. About 3,000 metalheads from all over the world invade the sunny and humid beaches of Florida, covering the sands in a dark cloud of black t-shirts and cheap beer. After a day or two of pre-partying, fans finish their last land beers in the cruise port terminal and jump on board the floating metal festival. Walking onto the ship for the first time is fucking crazy. You're overwhelmed with how insane and bizarre the whole thing is. There's restaurants, bars, a lot of bars, lounges, four stages, mosh pits, fruity drinks, headbanging, five-star dining, meet and greets, karaoke, pillow fights, a spa, a gym, surfing, crowd surfing in the elevator, people partying and passed out everywhere, it is awesome. 70,000 Tons is definitely the most spoiled you'll ever feel at a metal festival. Everyone gets their own room, with a bed and a shower, which is already fucking amazing. Each concert is only an elevator ride away. You're never more than a few feet from a bar. There's free food available you can easily get to. Yes, I said free, more on that in a second. Here you can watch a death metal band play in the arena, then go straight to the buffet and stuff yourself with free food, head over to the pool deck, grab a drink from the bar, then set yourself up in the hot tub, then watch bands play under the ocean night sky, staying up drinking and doing karaoke until you pass out in the elevator at 4 a.m. On 70,000 tons of metal, this is what's called completely normal. You're probably wondering about that free food I mentioned. Yes, it is true. Most of the food options on 70,000 tons are included with your ticket. The buffet is free. The pizza shop is free. There's an ice cream machine on the pool deck. It's free. Water is free. The big fancy sparkly ass dining hall is free. A lot of people think this costs extra. Even people who've been on the cruise before think that you have to pay to get into the dining hall. You do not, it is included. You can come in here wearing your battle vest and have a waiter place a napkin over your kilt, order a meal of roasted duck with garlic potatoes and a side of escargot at no extra charge. This is by far the best free food option on the ship. I always make a point to eat here once a day, even if I have to miss a band to do so. And if that isn't enough for your bougie ass, there are even fancier restaurants on board the ship. For an extra charge, you can go to this amazing steakhouse or this Italian restaurant. It can be a bit pricey, but damn is it good. It is worth it at least once if you can afford it. But what will definitely drain your bank account on this ship is booze. Alcohol is definitely not free. If I remember correctly, beers are about $8 and mixed drinks were about $13 or so, which you can very easily lose track of. There's a shitload of bars everywhere on this boat. You pretty much just have to stick your hand out and you'll get a beer. There's full on sports bars, a pub, a sailor lounge, pool deck bar, there's little pop-up bars everywhere. You don't even have to get out of the hot tub sometimes. Sometimes they'll take your order there and bring it to you. Fuck drinking a warm beer you left half buried in cow shit at Vakken overnight. Hot tub fruity drinks to obituary. On 70,000 tons, your room key is how you pay for everything on the ship. Anytime you want a drink, they just scan your room key and that way you can just have that on you and you don't have to worry about leaving cash in your pocket when you pass out drunk in the pool. It also makes it easy to forget how much you You've spent until you see your bill at the end of the cruise and die of a heart attack. But hey, it's worth it. It really isn't any different from a festival scanning your wristband at the bar, except this time it's a card, and that card gets you into your room. Don't lose it. 
There's so much awesome stuff to highlight on this boat, but let's not forget that this is a metal festival and there are bands to see. 60 metal bands play over four days on this ship, and a special feature here is every single band plays twice. Are Sodom playing at the same time as Marduk and you want to see both? Well, you'll actually get to here because they'll both be playing again later on. They usually get a fairly good mix of bands here, from old school death metal to folk metal, black metal, speed metal, although I will say there's typically a big emphasis on more melodic bands, whether that's mellow death, symphonic, or power metal. Bands play on four stages here, the highlight being the pool deck stage, located at the top of the ship. It's a big outdoor stage that makes it feel like an open air festival. You can get amazing views from all angles, including the hot tub. There's the Royal Theater, located inside the ship, that is pretty fucking nice. It has a lot of space for moshing and headbanging, and plenty of seats too for when you need a break. And there's no separation by your ticket, you can go from the front of the stage stage right up to the balcony if you want to. The third stage is Studio B, which on normal sailings is actually an ice skating rink, but on this cruise it's the club stage, where a lot of the wilder shows take place. This is definitely one of my favorite spots on the ship. And lastly, the Pyramid Lounge stage, which feels like your small local club venue and gets really crowded and smelly. Aside from those, artists will do free clinics for fans, every artist does a meet and greet, and they can also just be found hanging out around the ship. On this boat, there is no backstage. If bands aren't playing on stage or hiding in their rooms, they're out with everyone else, hanging out with fans, drinking, watching other bands, taking pictures, eating in the buffet, working out in the gym, trying to bring girls back to their rooms, passed out in the hot tub. It's a pretty cool experience. One time on this boat, I watched Cannibal Corpse while some of the Arch Enemy guys were in the crowd. I watched Venom play on the pool deck and Jeff from Possessed was there. One year I wasn't sure what time Blind Guardian were playing, so I just walked around until I found one of the members and asked them. It's a pretty rad breaking of the barrier between fans and bands both enjoying this bizarre heavy metal voyage. Just don't be weird when you see artists around. Remember that they're normal people on this trip too. So please don't stalk them every chance you get because if you drunkenly embarrass yourself in front of your favorite band here, you were probably going to bump into them later on and they might laugh at you. Being a cruise ship, this boat doesn't just float out in the middle of the ocean for a week. You get on the ship in Florida and spend a full day at sea surrounded by nothing but the ocean as far as the eye can see. It's pretty crazy. Then the following day, you get eight hours in a tropical island country. The years I've joined the cruise, we went to Jamaica, Haiti, and Mexico. And this year, the cruise will be going to the Dominican Republic. Lay out on the beach enjoying cheap drinks, buy some souvenirs from the very insistent merchants, or for some extra money, do one of the excursions where you can do such metal activities as swimming with dolphins, going on ATV tours, jet ski rides. In Haiti, we did this big ass zip line on the top of a mountain. I floated down a river in Jamaica while smoking a joint. That part wasn't part of the excursion. You can explore caves and waterfalls and whatever else they offer. Obviously, what exact excursions they offer varies depending on where you're going, but it's a pretty incredible experience you won't get at any other festival. You definitely can't swim with dolphins at Hellfest. One day on 70,000 tons of metal, I had breakfast in the buffet, walked off the ship into Haiti, had some beach drinks, did a little makeshift roller coaster thing they had there, then did this fucking crazy zip line that goes from the top of a mountain over a forest, over a beach in the water, and right back near the ship. After which, I went back on board and ate an amazing lamb dinner at that steakhouse, then watched Dark Funeral play a blistering set on the pool deck as we sailed back to the sea and spent the rest of the night watching bands that I don't remember. That is the type of experience you can only get at 70,000 tons of metal. It is insane, it is exhilarating, it is exhausting, and it is expensive. By now, you're assuming that this cruise ship costs about as much as a new car and is only for those elite metal heads who can hire Metallica to play at their baby showers. Well, yeah, it's definitely a lot, but it is manageable with enough preparation. The cheapest single ticket for the cruise is about $1,199, and here's the real shitty thing. There's an extra a surcharge of $469 for every single ticket. This isn't 70,000 tons being dicks and just wanting to rip people off. This is actually normal in the cruising industry, especially on Royal Caribbean. But yeah, the cheapest single person ticket after everything is roughly $1,600 and some change. Actually, single tickets get another $100 surcharge, so roughly $1,700. <laughs> but the caveat to single rider tickets you're gonna want to keep in mind is you're given a room to share with about two or three 
other single writers, which means you're sharing your room with strangers. Which hey, is totally fine for some people, but it's just good to keep in mind. What you're probably going to want to do is get a room with your friends. Guests can book rooms for up to seven other people, and it's a lot more fun to have your cabin mates be your friends. The price is roughly the same as the single writers, but yes, again, everyone has to pay an extra $469 in fees. For the rooms, there are a couple different types. The cheapest are the interiors, the smallest rooms with no windows at all and kind of feel like you're sleeping in a closet. Ocean view is the same thing, but actually has a window. You may not think that it makes that much of a difference, but it does. If you're cool with spending a little extra money, you can get a balcony room, which is by far the best option. These are amazing. You can wake up and have coffee looking over the ocean, go watch bands all day, then come back to your private balcony looking at the full moon while you vomit over the side of the rail. It's lovely. And if you're really rich, you can get one of these spacious suites for you and your friends to have your own private mosh pits in. The price for any of these is pretty expensive, but do keep in mind that price includes endless food around the ship, so you can easily eat your money's worth. So if you don't buy any alcohol and don't do any of the paid excursions, once you pay that price for your ticket, you don't really have to pay for anything else on the ship. They do also offer payment plans, so you can pay off your ticket in four installments, which helps a little bit. Getting to 70,000 tons of metal is pretty easy, you just gotta get yourself to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's about 45 minutes north of Miami, there's plenty of hotels and Airbnbs in the area. I highly recommend getting there at least one day early, if not more. This this is one festival that you cannot show up late to. They will leave you behind to go cry your failure away in a shady Miami strip club while all of your friends go party the high metal seas. If you saw my previous video on 70,000 tons, you'll have seen that I highlighted very heavily their weird issue of still announcing bands leading up to the last weeks of the cruise. It's something 70k likes to do, I guess to surprise fans as they discover who they're gonna see in a month. It's weird and I don't like it, but it seems that that 70,000 tons is at least starting to get better at it. At the time of this video being posted, they have about half of their lineup announced for 2024, and it's already got some killer bands I would love to see. Aborted, Blind Guardian, Blood Red Throne, Crypta, Flesh God Apocalypse, Infected Rain, Cataclysm, Marduk, The Halo Effect, and a whole lot more. So far, at least to me, this lineup is already pretty sweet. Be nice if the full thing was out already, but hey, it's off to a great start. If you do get the funds together and find yourself on board this ship, you will have undoubtedly one of the most insane times of your life. Sailing the open seas, drinking 24-7, watching metal bands till 4 in the morning, doing the Titanic pose at the front of the ship, meeting your favorite bands in the elevator, eating till you gain 300 pounds, hot tub headbanging, hilarious karaoke. The last day of the cruise is an unofficial costume day too, so you'll see superheroes running around, Pikachu mosh pits, I was John Wick last time I went on the cruise, a lot of movies characters and inflatable dicks everywhere. It's pretty hilarious. And if you're lucky enough to go a year when death metal band Origin are playing on the ship, they always have the world's biggest death metal pillow fight. <laughs> I walked down into this show and someone just handed me a pillow as I went running into the pit. That is the kind of experience you'll find only at 70,000 tons of metal. So check it out if you want a break from sleeping in mud and getting rained on at normal festivals. It is definitely an experience you will never forget. For more from me, check out my band Dark Insanity on Instagram and here on the channel. <laughs>